All right, on this episode of Building the X Set, I'm going to be focusing on fuel tank mounting. Now, if you've done a little research on the fuel tank, you will find that uh, if you're using the stock Miata tank as I am going to, there's been some issues with the mounting brackets that are welded in from X Motive. Mainly these being way, way, way too weak. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, they basically, when you figure a, say, 10, 20 pound tank and you know, let's say, from what I've heard, eight to nine, sometimes 10 gallons of gas that you can physically get in the tank, uh, that there is really not enough support there when you figure 180 to 100 pounds of liquid sloshing around back and forth in the tank. It will start in time to deform the brackets that it's mounted to. So since the tank doesn't actually mount to the brackets because the rear subframe is in the way, it basically has to use, uh, I think, one to two inch standoffs to suspend the tank up in the air above the mounting brackets. Uh, because of this problem, you basically have, you know, a couple, four standoffs, the thickness of my finger here, uh, supporting all that weight. And that movement can basically start to take these thin, paper thin, almost sheet metal brackets and start to bend them. So because of this, before I actually mount my tank, I'm going to fabricate what I would call an appropriate bracket for your fuel tank. Uh, in my opinion, the ones that are welded in from the factory are not near sufficient enough for the amount of weight and the way that the fuel tank has to be mounted to be appropriate for moving forward uh, with the fuel tank mounting as is. So I'm going to get to it. First thing I'm going to show you basically uh, the, the mounting brackets that are welded in from Eximotive and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to brace those brackets more to get hopefully quite a bit more strength out of them to reduce any deforming that can happen. So let's get to it. Things first, I'd like to show you just the uh, stock. Uh, this is a 1992 donor, but the stock 92 fuel tank. Um, I think the um, NB tank's a little different, but I believe all the NA tanks are the same. Uh, basically, you can see here, it will rest down in the back of the car. However, in the front, it is hitting right down there on the subframe. So as you can see, it has to sit up quite a ways off of these mounting brackets. That on top of the rear of the tank actually needs to be positioned higher than the front of the tank as it is in the Miata. Because of this, you want to get as much height as possible in the rear of the tank. Um, so you want to actually lift the rear of the tank up as much as possible um, and lower the front of the tank as much as possible in order to get the most fuel and the least amount of fuel starvation that you can. Um, so a lot of guys, because of this, are running um, aftermarket fuel cells. I've considered doing so, but for right now, I just want to keep it simple and I'm going to be mounting in the stock tank. In the future, if I don't like the stock tank, I always can go ahead and re-weld and um, put on some new brackets for, uh, uh, for an aftermarket fuel cell if I, if I deem it necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the tank off here and uh, show you these stock mounting brackets that it comes with. Let me just mount the camera here real quick. And we'll get to that. Okay, so um, first things first, I'll show you there's basically these four mounting points for the fuel tank. And um, these larger ones, I don't know if you can see in the camera, with just a little pressure, I mean, probably 20, 30 pounds of pressure, you can easily bend these mounts. I'll pick the camera up here again so you can see just how thin this sheet metal is here for this bracket. Now it's very well supported with this bend here on the end and welded in and the closer you get to the ends it actually does stay pretty stiff. Um, however some of these mounting points you can see that deflection there hopefully. Um, this one's actually already bent um, from the factory I guess you'd call that. But uh, anyways I'm going to actually be taking some uh, steel plate that I have here laying around that is around an eighth inch thick and what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to put these over it trace out um, the bracket and I'm going to cut this uh, piece of sheet metal here or plate, I guess you would call it that thickness, but I'm going to actually be mounting that and 
welding it up underneath here along the edges and to these frame rails and then re-drilling these holes. This will make these brackets, I would say, about uh, four times, four to five times thicker than the stock mounting bracket is. So that should add quite a bit of rigidity to this point here. So basically I'm going to do that for um, all four of these brackets. It's quite a bit of work, um, especially when you just have limited tools like me, such as a angle grinder and so forth, I have to cut this plate with, but it's something that really, in my opinion, is a necessity that has to be done. Give you guys a quick overview here. I have this plate welded in, welded on the edge, and also underneath to these frame tubes. Same with this one here. And just to show you, this is what the passenger rear front tank mount looks like. Excuse my bad welds, I forgot to turn my gas on. Um, basically, I have an eighth inch plate under this whole area. Once the frame is removed, I will be tacking it also underneath all the way around, and I'm going to clean up my nasty welds there. But as you can see, there's quite a bit more support there, and uh, none of the flex that there was before. As hard as I want to push on it, I can't even get it to flinch. With the fuel cell here uh, from the Miata, I've decided that I am not going to um, reverse mount it as I was thinking because the filler neck being here with the wing um, just isn't in an appropriate spot and there's not enough room to bring the hose around through the inside of the bodywork. So um, what I'm going to do is just mount it the standard way. Uh, the one important thing when you mount this is you want to make sure that it is higher in the rear than it is in the front. Uh, as you can see, down in here, that is the sump area of the fuel tank. And right now, uh, if you just set it on, you can see this large gap here. That is because the sump hits the subframe there. So it actually, these mounts from X Motive really are um, almost useless in their current form. You actually have to make mounts on top of them to extend the height of the tank up. Now the issue that that causes is that you cannot get the proper pitch forward on the tank uh, to, to fill it up all the way. Um, so you try to get as much pitch as possible, but really only about one to two inches of pitch is going to be possible and still fit underneath the bodywork. So what I'm going to do is I have purchased some poly uh, urethane, basically a plastic nylon plastic rod. Uh, this one and a half inches thick. Um, it's very, very stiff. It's not bendable. It's not a rubber, um, but it does have a, a slight bit of cushion in comparison to metal. But this gives a very wide surface area to make mounts for the tank. Basically, I'm going to be cutting this down using shoulder bolts and then drilling the middle of it out for the shoulder bolt uh, to space this up off the frame. So I'm going <clears> to... <throat> basically go through here and get these mounts made up and kind of show you what they look like and then I'll give you the measurement and details of all the bolts and fasteners and show you how it how it will fasten onto the frame. Here's an example of the first mount here. It's about an inch and five eighths. Um, got cut a teeny bit crooked but that's not really important. Uh, inch and five eighths this would be a front of the car mount and then this is the um, I can't remember what it is, inch and three quarter inch and a half um, shoulder bolt. The idea is basically the shoulder bolt will fit inside here. As you can see, it's a quite snug fit. This basically allows so that the th threads on a normal bolt would go all the way through. This will not um, damage the inside of the poly rod. So um, this is the best way. Uh, my friend Sean Kastner uh, gave me this idea actually, and uh, I think it's quite useful. Um, so basically just getting these shoulder bolts, uh, you can get them at Fastenal and get two different sizes. I think I got an inch and three quarter, I believe it was, for the front of the tank and three inch for the rear of the tank. I was like, it was going to be a little uh, inch, inch and a half of uh, pitch toward the front of the tank. Here is a, uh, basically took a four pound hammer and uh, beat the hell out of the sump area here. Uh, just not a lot, maybe a half inch, quarter inch of uh, push inward. As you can see, it's kind of deformed here. Um, you're not probably not going to be picking up any of the fuel in this area anyways. Um, that'll be the very, very last bit of the fuel. So maybe took a few ounces of capacity out of it, but it will help uh, get the, the tank lower to the frame. 
uh, without really sacrificing any other issues. So uh, that's why I did to get a little bit more nudge here. Now we'll see if it all fits. Okay, so um, went ahead and got all four of the mounts made and installed. And I unfortunately got about an inch of uh, rake between the back and the front. I was hoping for inch and a half, but um, not possible with the setup I have here. So um, basically these rear ones, I believe, were about two and a quarter, two and a half inches long. These were two and a half inch shoulders on a three inch bolt. In the front, it was one and a half inch shoulders on a one and three quarter inch bolt, as I recall. And then you can see the, uh, the front mounts there. Let me turn the light on here and see if I can show you the clearance between the rear subframe and the uh, and the tank. I don't know if you guys can see that in the in the video or not, but basically there is a very minute, about a quarter inch clearance between that subframe and the fuel tank. I'll go around to the cabin side of the car here. Let's see if I can get a video of this here. Um, See how close that is there, and that is with, I don't know if you can see, but the drain plug's right under there. That is with beating in the bottom of the tank. So, very, very tight tolerances there. In reality, these if, if they're going to put mounts on, they should either put a flat bar mount and make you get a fuel cell, or they should build these mounts up um, to extend the tank like shown. Uh, in order to make it fit right. The brackets as they as they give you in the kit welded in are uh, basically completely worthless. Sorry about the song there, my battery charger's finished. So um, you have to make some sort of mount to suspend the tank like this and get a little bit of pitch forward to have any hopes of having a, a decent amount of gas, uh, you know, getting eight or nine gallons of gas in your tank. In the future, if wanted, I can weld between this uh, bar here and the in the front one I can weld some braces and put a fuel cell in here but by then you're doing pump different lines uh, fuel pressure regulator sender units everything like that and it ends up uh, really running you close to about a thousand dollars to do a proper setup so at this point I'm gonna try this out see how it goes I'm not going to be driving this thing super long distances as it's going to be a very uncomfortable car to to ride in but um, you know most people I've talked to, when it's a flat mounted tank, flat front to back, you can get about eight gallons out of the, I think it's a 12 gallon stock tank. Um, people do experience in racing on hard left hand turns, um, basically all the fuel coming out of the sump and going to this side of the tank. And when they're at about a third tank, uh, sometimes a half tank, they can get fuel starvation issues. Um, when the tank's tilted forward, I've heard of people getting up to nine or 10 gallons in the tank. Um, once again, uh, still can have those fuel starvation issues in left-handers uh, as the fuel's drawn out of the sump area and the pickup area for the pump. But um, you know, I'm going to go with this for now and and see what happens. And uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know if something changes. But for that, for now, that's uh, that's the fuel tank install. Uh, next video is going to be running. I got all new stuff to make braided lines myself, and I'm going to be running braided stainless lines from the fuel tank to the front of the transmission tunnel and covering them in TechFlex. So I'll show you guys on that one. In the meantime, thanks for watching.